grab it while she can. Yeah. And this week I've been having a look at a very different way of earning a quid. It's a bit shady, certainly dangerous, but if you're good, it's easy. It's called hustling, gambling on snooker and pool. Pretending you're no good, getting some sucker hooked, and then cleaning up. You don't have to be on the telly to play under pressure. If you like the colour of money, there's plenty of cash in the little leagues. This is the hustle. You ready, Andy? Oh, we start. Put my hand to this. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100 pounds. OK, then let's go. And that's how the match is set up. There are about 600 professional snooker players in the UK, but only the top 64 earn a decent living from tournament play. For the rest, it's a different story. Many of them earn their living like this. This is a match for £100, five frames. James, would you like to call? Heads, please. James is 22, a snooker pro for the last three years. He's played the best and last, so until his big break, this is where he makes his money. My ambitions in snooker are obviously to be world snooker champion, but it's so hard at the moment to make money because there's so many young, talented snooker players about. So I hustle to make extra cash and to make ends meet. I can make at least 500 to 1,000 a week, but then there's a lot of good players out there. So, at the end of the day, it is a gamble. But James is reluctant to describe himself as a hustler. We don't really like to call it hustling at Snook. It's more like money matches. We both put our skill to the test. James won his game of skill and the cash. to nil. Your 100, your winning. Cheers. Thanks a lot. Well, all that was pretty civilised, wasn't it? But just up the road, there's an altogether different sort of hustling. It's more dirty, it's more dangerous. The type of hustling where acting ability is just about as important as how well you can play. And we're off to meet someone who reckons he's one of the best actors in North London. What you want to be when you grow up? I want to be a motherfucking hustler. I'm Pat the Chat, and I'm what you regard as a pool hustler. Pat O'Kane is the fifth-ranked pool professional in this country. But that doesn't even pay the rent. For serious money, it's down to serious business. Pat claims he earns thousands of pounds hustling. The person who I play, whatever he's got in his pocket, I lab the lot off him before he goes. You've got to go down for their greed, because all hustling is about greed. Sounds impressive, but it can get dangerous if you're sussed. I went into a club down in East London, and I won £700. And then a fella come into the club, which I'd been with before and had a few quid off, hustled him before. So, like, I know, like, it's come on top now. So, like, I'd left the £700 down on the table. And then I went to walk out, and the whole club sort of r rose up. That's when I knew, and I just left about 300 quid what I went in there with. So how do you stay safe? Pat took me to his local to show me how it's done. Our first victims were already playing and about to lose money thanks to Pat's four golden rules. You've got to go there. You've been on the drink all day. So they think you're drunk. Seven o'clock this morning we started. <laughs> Let's have a pub in Covent Garden. Oh. Opens up at six in the morning. You bring your own chalk. Because you can use a bad cue, but you can't use... Bad chalk. Yeah, I've got a bit of chalk. The third one is you've got to lose the first few. He's going to pop that, isn't he? <laughs> the fourth one, the most important one, is you've got to get into their confidence. Become like their best friend for the day. Rupert, Rupert, Pat. Hello. How are you going? Hello. Hi, mate. What's your name? Steve. Steve, Steve. right, Steve. And then Pat reeled them in. You put 10. If you win, I'll give you 15. And still, they came back for more. If you put 15 up, we'll put 25. So if you win, you win the 25 back. 
And if you lose, you only lose 15. As Pat cleaned up, we owned up. How did you get sucked into that? Well, to start with, you didn't look too good. So we thought, you know... And you said you'd been drinking since, you, since sort of six in the morning or something. So we thought, you know, a bit drunk. Very surprised about how much money we lost without really realising it. It was just like a five here, a ten there, but then at the end of the day, it was 50, 50 odd quid. But for Pat, it was just another fat lunch. Typical lunchtime. What, could, what sort of business can you do in a place like this? Uh, well, we've just gone in there. Well, we've been there about three hours, and what have we copped? About 350 quid. There are hundreds of hustlers like Pat working the pubs and clubs. They're out for easy money and they're getting it. For some, it's a means to an end. But for others, the hustle is a way of life. You never wake up in the night in a cold sweat thinking, I need to repent. I'll have to think about that now, not <laughs> <laughs> when it happens to me. No, not at all. Really. Well, he might not have any conscience, but we have. We made sure that everyone who took part in that film uh, got their uh, money back. Oh, he, is, he is heading for a severe slapping at some stage, mm. isn't he, when people catch up with him? Well, it is dangerous, as you saw in the film, but I think he just views it as an occupational hazard and he needs the, uh, the dosh. He's mm. never going to be able to break out of that, though, is he? I mean, he'll never be able to go in, into a nine-to-five now because the money's not there and certainly not the adrenaline. Well, he doesn't uh, drive a, a Porsche, but he earns a living at it and I guess he's just happy to take the risks and he does enjoy that life, yeah. I've got, I've got to ask you, I mean, these professional players, the sort of people that we see at all these tournaments in Sheffield, did they do that as well? Well, I couldn't name names, but certainly many of the top professionals took part in those money matches early in their career because it takes a while for people to break through and they've got to make a living in the meantime. So, yes, the answer is yes, they do. I mean, they're just making the best of their talents in the same way that the girls in the film were with the, uh, the boob jobs. Well, <laughs> following on from strippers and hustlers, joining us live in the studio this week is a man who's lived by his wheel.